Hello and welcome back to yet another canal adventure. The boat has been blacked, refloated from the dry dock and we've had a cup of tea. You join us here on the Grand Union Canal below Cosgrove Lock and heading for the Iron Trunk which will carry us over the River Great Ouse. Cosgrove Aqueduct is another cast iron trough aqueduct that carries the Grand Union Canal over the River Great Ouse on the borders between Buckinghamshire and Nottinghamshire at the northwest margin of Milton Keynes in England. The present structure was built in 1811 to replace a previous brick structure that had failed. When the present structure was erected, it was known as the Iron Trunk. The structure has two cast iron trough spans with a single central masonry pier. The trough is 15 feet or 4.6 meters wide, 6 foot 6 inches or 1.98 meters deep, with a total length of 101 feet, that's 31 meters. The iron trunk itself was constructed on site after the pieces were carried here from the Ketley foundry at Colebrookdale. They were carried by barge. The canal surface is about 40 feet or 12 metres above the surface of the river. There are large approach earthworks about 36 feet or 11 metres high above the valley floor and 150 feet or 46 metres wide, with a total length of half a mile or 800 metres. We've got a bag of Percy Pig sweets from Marks and Spencers oh, that we will be eating during our journey. Well, it is my birthday week. Oh, oh, right, yes, switching on the bow thrusters would be useful so we can easily manoeuvre away from the trees and bushes in front of the boat after this boat has passed us. Excellent, was about to ask. <laughs> Thanks. Today is Thursday the 8th of August 2019. It is two days after my birthday and we're still in my birthday week. This is our first time of travelling by canal through Milton Keynes and after topping up with some water this morning at the water point below Cosgrove Lock we set off on our mammoth journey to pass all the way through Milton Keynes in a single day. As you can see the weather gods are being favourable today. The temperature is good and there is little to no chance of any precipitation. As you can probably tell, this journey wasn't heavily scripted. 
we randomly talk about what we see and what we plan to do or what we have done. There are plenty of silent moments where we are just happy being where we are. Derelict looking buildings on the right hand side of the canal form part of the Wolverton Railway Works. The site is still in operation today in slightly more modern buildings on the other side of these historic sheds. Wolverton Railway Works were established in 1838 at the midpoint of the 112 mile route from London to Birmingham. This line between the two cities was the first intercity line to be built and terminates at Euston Station in London and Curzon Street Station in Birmingham. It is now the southern section of the West Coast Main Line. The Act of Parliament that approved the London to Birmingham Rail Route included a clause which specified that a rail works be built around the midpoint. 
as it was considered unsafe at the time for railway locomotives to move more than 50 miles without further inspection. Wolverton was chosen due to its co-location alongside the wharfing facilities of the Grand Union Canal. Bridge 70 on the Grand Union Canal is named Robert Stevenson Bridge. It's Grade 2 listed. Robert Stevenson was an early English railway and civil engineer, the only son of George Stevenson, the father of railways. He built on the achievements of his father, and Robert has been called the greatest engineer of the 19th century. As you can imagine, when the London and Birmingham Railway Company proposed the building of a bridge, the canal company wasn't happy with the idea of a competitor of the canal haulage trade building a bridge over its canal, and protested that the supporting piles would have to be drilled into the bank of the canal. Then, on the 23rd of December 1834, the London and Birmingham Railway Company, using the element of surprise, sent its contractors in to build the bridge. They completed building the bridge in just two days. A week afterwards, the canal company brought in an equally large force of canal workers, who tore down the bridge and removed the piles. Of course, the London and Birmingham Railway Company were not happy about all of this and took the matter to court. They took out an injunction to prevent the canal company from damaging any future bridges. Wolverton has a long history associated with providing carriages for the British Royal Train. The works produced Queen Victoria's 1869 saloon comprising two six-wheelers joined by the first bellows gangway in Europe. The carriage is now part of the collection of the National Railway Museum in York. Further royal coaches were built in 1903 for King Edward VII and in 1961 for Queen Elizabeth II. There is a lot of information about the works here at Wolverton on the internet and a quick Google search will provide you with a wealth of information and images. Wolverton continues to be developed around the canal, as you can see here on the left hand side with these modern looking apartments. Planning permission has been applied for for the development of the historic rural train shed and the old recreation grounds on the railway works site. We hope that you have enjoyed this part of our journey through Milton Keynes. On the next part of the journey, we'll be cruising past the Secret Garden and alongside the 190 metre long Wolverton train mural. If you'd like to be notified of when we post that vlog, please click on the subscribe button and then on the bell icon. As soon as we post the next one, you'll be alerted. It really is as simple as two clicks. Don't forget that if you've really enjoyed what you've viewed today, you can give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment, then please do feel free to do so below. We do read and respond to all the comments. Well, it's time for us to go now. So thank you for watching and we hope to see you next time. Bye.